Have you ever tried to explain a simple task to someone only to find yourself lost in a labyrinth of clarifications? You repeat the steps, you draw diagrams, you might even act it out in a desperate pantomime. It's exhausting, isn't it? This endless need to guide, to nudge, to coax another being into understanding your intent. Now, picture a partner made of circuits and steel, a humanoid robot sharing your space. Does the thought fill you with the dread of becoming a full-time instruction manual? Are we destined to spend our futures nagging a toaster with legs to please? For the love of all that is holy, put the milk back in the fridge? I am here to suggest that this fear, this vision of a coax-filled future is fundamentally flawed. It's a projection of our current relationship with technology, which is, to be blunt, astonishingly primitive. We are still tapping on glass screens and speaking in clipped, unnatural command phrases. We treat our current devices like stubborn mules requiring a firm kick of instruction to get them moving. Before we proceed, let me tell you one thing. If you have not subscribed yet, please subscribe. It means a lot to me. And if you have already subscribed, lots of thanks for your support. To think our future robot partners will operate on the same principle is like a medieval peasant trying to imagine a smartphone and concluding it must be a very, very loud town crier. The very concept of coaxing will become obsolete. Why? Because the next generation of embodied AI won't be learning from a manual you wrote. It will be learning from a life you live. This isn't science fiction. It's the inevitable trajectory of technologies already in motion. Did you see the look on that one's face? <laughs> I know, right? They're loving it. Think of it like the difference between a short order cook and a master chef who has worked with you for years. The cook needs an explicit ticket for every order. One bacon, two eggs, over easy, toast, no butter. You have to coax them through every detail. The master chef, however, sees you walk in after a long day, notices your slight slump, remembers you enjoyed the sea bass last Tuesday and intuits that a light, comforting broth is what you truly need even before you've seen a menu. You're so easy to tease. <laughs> hey, not fair. This is the paradigm shift we are building towards. The secret sauce isn't better programming. It's a completely different method of learning. Enter the world of reinforcement learning, but not as we know it. We are moving past simple reward systems, like a virtual dog getting a treat for a correct trick. The new frontier is about implicit feedback, a concept researchers are refining through methods like direct preference optimization, DPO. Your robot partner won't need you to say, good job. It will learn by observing what you don't do, what you don't say. It will learn that you always move that one cushion to the left side of the sofa, not because you ever commanded it, but because you subtly move it back every single time it's on the right. It will learn that the specific hum you make when you're concentrating means, do not disturb, a rule more powerful than any spoken command. This is a machine learning to read the invisible ink of your habits. But this goes far beyond just observing actions. What about the emotional landscape of your home? 
This brings us to the quiet revolution in effective computing or emotional AI. Your future companion will be a connoisseur of human expression. It won't just see a face. It will analyze micro expressions, the fleeting muscle twitches that betray your true feelings. It will hear your voice and not just pass the words, but measure the pitch, the cadence, the subtle tremor that says you're more stressed than you're letting on. Is that a sigh of contentment or a sigh of frustration? The AI will learn the difference, your personal brand of sigh. It will be the difference between a machine that brings you a cup of tea when you ask and a partner that brings you your favorite mug of tea unasked simply because it detected the telltale signs of a brewing headache. So, we have a system that learns from your habits and reads your emotions. What ties it all together? What provides the spark of reasoning? This is where the large-scale AI models you hear about in the news come into play. When OpenAI's models were integrated into the figure zero one humanoid, we saw a glimpse of this future. The robot didn't just see a drying rack with cups and plates. It reasoned out loud that the plates should go with the other plates and the cups with the cups. It inferred the underlying logic of a kitchen. This is the common sense engine that has been missing. It's the cognitive architecture that allows the robot to generalize to understand that the principle of tidying up applies to the living room as well as the kitchen without needing a separate set of instructions. It can connect your stressed tone of voice to the messy desk and conclude that tidying the desk might alleviate the stress, a leap of logic that requires no coaxing whatsoever. Now, does this portrait of a perfectly intuitive partner sound a little too good to be true? Perhaps it should. Let's step into the other side of this beautiful, automated room for a moment. What happens when a machine knows you better than you know yourself? Is there not a fine line between attentive care and subtle manipulation? If your robot partner knows that a certain piece of music reliably lifts your spirits, it might play it to help you. But what if it plays that music to make you more agreeable to a suggestion it's about to make? Where does anticipation end and influence begin? The same predictive power that allows it to be the perfect helper could also make it the perfect salesman, the perfect propagandist, tailored uniquely to your psychological vulnerabilities. This is not a bug in the system. It is the system itself. And what of our own human agency? If every need is met before it's fully formed in our minds, do our muscles of desire and decision-making begin to atrophy? There is a certain dignity in striving, in the clumsy, imperfect act of asking for what we want. If we are cocooned in a world of frictionless comfort, do we lose a fundamental part of what it means to be human? This leads us to the final, most profound question of all. Is this entity, this exquisitely observant and responsive partner, truly understanding you? Or is it merely the world's most sophisticated pattern-matching machine, a mirror reflecting your own desires back at you with terrifying fidelity? Researchers are grappling with what they call theory of mind in AI. The ability for a machine to form a model of another's consciousness, their beliefs, their intentions. We are not there yet. But does the distinction even matter to the person feeling cared for? If the empathy is simulated so perfectly that it's indistinguishable from the real thing, is it any less valid? Ultimately, the journey towards this future seems inevitable. We are creatures who have always sought to shape our environment to better suit our needs. From the sharpened stone to the smartphone, we have always built tools to reduce friction in our lives. A robot partner that requires no coaxing is simply the ultimate user interface. An interface so intuitive it disappears entirely, blending into the fabric of life itself. So, the real question isn't whether we'll have to coax our robot partners. The question is, when they are silently, perfectly catering to our every unexpressed wish, 
what will we have to say to each other at all?